Brown Devs Kay, thanks so much for joining me today and welcome to my little studio. Um, okay, going to change things up a little bit here on YouTube. I wanted to show you just a technique that I use um, from time to time when I want to uh, create snow or some sparkles or things like that, just that little bit of extra dimension. Um, so I'm going to slow things down a little bit and just show you a section of this video um, of a winter's morning um, to show you how I create all those lovely little sparkles. So, and then obviously you can go and uh, apply that to your own painting. All right, so thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, let's get painting. And so I wanted to share this technique with you as it's something I often use. Um, I use it in a variety of, um, you know, variety of circumstances. Um, sometimes, you know, like in here, I want to create that little, that little feeling of a frosty morning, um, or you can use it for snow or just if you want a little bit of extra sparkle. Um, so it's a really handy technique, um, that you can use with pastels just to give yourself that little bit of extra dimension, a little bit of extra depth and a little bit of extra, um, sparkle. Cool, yeah, <laughs> a little bit of extra life in your painting. Um, and so basically, as you can see, uh, I'm bringing you in at this painting where I've sort of like got my uh, rough out of focus background uh, to what's going on behind this painting. You know, those sort of trees as they go off into the forest there. And, uh, you know, my basic colours in there, all soft and very out of focus. Um, and I'm just, you know, got the video running at a fast speed at the moment, just so that you can see, um, you know, sort of uh, me starting off these top layers now. I'm just going to give myself a little bit of a base um, and a little bit more indication of the colours I want uh, that I want to go on behind these sparkles that I'm going to put down. Um, so I'm going through and uh, using, you know, using the colours in the in the areas I want, sort of greens to the front and things. And then I've got those lovely sort of purpley, uh, pur purpley sort of, um, you know, soft pinky purples in the background there um, going off into the distance and taking you off around the corner. Um, and as you can see, I'm using basically I'm sort of scumbling my um, my uh, pastels o o over the uh, areas just to give me that sort of just a, a little bit of extra onto, onto the out of focus background. Okay, so now I've slowed the uh, video back down for you. Um, and you can see now what I've got is um, uh, I've got a, a soft pastel in my hand. Um, now I've chosen uh, to begin with, I've chosen sort of one of my light, probably the lightest uh, color that I'm going to use here, which is sort of like a silvery gray. Um, has actually got a little bit of sparkle in this pastel, um, which is nice because it adds that little bit of extra dimension. Um, but if you don't have a sparkly pastel, um, you know, a nice, a nice light, um, you know, if you want to create this type of effect, a nice light colour one, um, go for your lightest colour to begin with. And what you can see me doing now, as you can see, I've got the pastel in one hand and uh, the sort of craft knife in the other. And I'm just ever so gently um, scraping off um, little pieces of, of the pastel. Um, now, in this instance, I've got my pastel fairly close to my uh, close to my uh, sheet of paper uh, because I want to make sure that those that those sparkles go in, you know, in general in the places that I want them. Um, so the closer your pastel is to your paper, the more sort of perhaps control you've got of where those um, where those little bits of dust are falling off. Um, now, in this instance, because I want the you know to feel as if if as if they're sort of like dropleting down, you know, some of these are little raindrops, and it's just the frost sort of defrosting and things um, but it, I, I want it to feel as if it's going in a vertical motion so in this instance I've got my I have got my board sort of fairly upright but with a slight angle so that I, I'm sort of benefiting from you know the the law of gravity really so that, that you know when I'm scraping off that pastel it's kind of dropping down the paper to give me that effect of sort of like everything um, you know gent gently uh, gently coming down there um, now if you want to do something that you know hasn't got sort of a gravitational feel to it and you just want to do a little bit of sparkles on the paper as I did in in um, my beauty in the shadows the line that I did uh, last week uh, where I just wanted a little bit of sparkle in the grasses and I didn't necessarily you know I wanted those to feel more like heads um, so in that instance I laid my paper flat in order to do that um, but as I say here I've got it I've got it sort of upright but at, at a slight angle 
so it's not just dropping straight past the paper. Um, just just tilt it back ever so slightly. And then as you can see, as I say, just literally taking taking my time, going past, looking at looking at my reference photo there, seeing where most of those sparkles are. Um, now I'm starting off with just one colour at the moment. Um, I will come back in and, and pop some some more colours through, and I'll be layering this so that uh, it's not all just one dimensional and doesn't look as if it's going to sit on the top. So what I'm doing now is, is as you can see, is just gently scraping off, you know, any any areas that I can see that I've got the majority of the, you know, those little sparkles in. That's where I'm scraping off the pastels. Um, now obviously some of these, you know, some of these 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 spots may not fall in the right place and uh, I'll show you how I deal with that in just a moment but as you can see now what I've got in my hand is this is a piece of glassine paper um, or I think it might be called crystal paper in some countries um, but basically as you can see I put the pop the paper on the top and basically smoothed out and now all those little um, you know those little dots that I put down there that I push those into the paper so they're going to stay there so they're not going to just drop off you know the second you move your pastel um, and now, as I mentioned earlier, you know, in in some places, you know, those those um those little those little uh, crystals of pastel have dropped in areas where I don't want them, um, or you know, I I want them less obvious. So I'm just softening off those areas. And as you can see at the moment, what I've got is I've got a just soft paintbrush in my hand there now, and I'm just dabbing, dab, you know, literally dabbing that on where I want things softened. Because as I say, what I want to do is create this in layers. Um, so I'm going to be doing doing this little bit of um you know this little bit of, uh, of sparkle now then i'm going to be you know coming in and putting some more detail on which you'll see in a moment then i'll come back in once i've got that on and have another go at, at this with some other colors um so what i'm doing as i say is i'm softening this down because i want it to feel uh, dimensional not as if all these are just suddenly plopped on the top i want them to feel part of the painting so some of them are going to be more in focus some of them are going to be brighter some of them are going to be a little bit duller as you can see popping back in with my glassine every time I do something like that just pop back in with the glassine and push it back into the paper and now you can see I'm coming in with a very pale green um, and uh, I'm using this in the areas uh, where I can I can see sort of the the, the greeny um, the greeny bits coming through. Obviously, the sunshine's coming through and just sort of like hitting that little spot there. So you've got all sorts of little colours of the rainbow here. Um, and as I say, if this was snow, for example, I'd just be using sort of varying different shades of white and blue. Um, but obviously, as we have got some other other colours going on coming through, hitting hitting those, I popped a little bit of green in those places. So now I'm speeding up the video a little bit um, and, you know, because what I'm doing is I'm coming back in with my pastels um, to put, you know, to, to, to build up, as I say, build up another layer layer or two in between before I come back and do some sparkles. So what I'll do is I'll just let you watch me sort of build it up a little bit and uh, start bring, making this feel a little bit more three dimensional. And uh, I'll pop back in a minute when we come back to some more sparkles. All right, then. See you in a moment.
Okay, so as you can see, I've sort of like built that up a little bit. So bringing the, you know, bringing the bits that are to the foreground, they're now starting to feel as if they're coming to the foreground now. Um, and uh, those initial sparkles that I put down, um, that you know, they're now some of those are going to be, you know, some of those are behind those branches and things. Um, and so what you're seeing me doing now, so I'm slowing back the video back down now. Um, and as you can see, coming again, back in again with a little dry paintbrush there. Again, just taking off some sparkles where I don't want them and now I'm doing a couple of you know a few different darker ones now um, you know because obviously as you're coming down this path this path is all little frosty and things and uh, you know you've got some sparkles going on there too um, but you don't want to put too many white you know sort of as the very light ones down in this lower area because it is all in shade um, so it's just basically to give a little bit of variation um, within that sort of uh, grav gravelly path that's going up there so using sort of uh, you know the the, the tones that I've used in that area um, sort of the, all those lovely sort of lilac -y ones and again there you see me just coming back in uh, with a soft paintbrush again and just uh, smoothing off some in you know where I, where I don't want them too obvious I want it to be a little bit more subtle down at the front uh, really I want your your eye to be drawn up um, sort of like walking past you know past that pretty bush on the left and sort of un underneath all those sparkles above your head and that's where I want you to, you know you, you to be focused so you want to go off around that corner and and just just see more delights as you go through so putting in a few you know putting in a couple of branches there and uh, as I say you know smoothing off a little bit um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back up into you know I come back up the up the value scale a little bit putting a little bit of pink in there a little soft pale, pale pink that I've got in my hand there and uh, I'm going to be using that up also in the tree as well um, and uh, now going to be going up into my tree and doing basically going through the same process a um, little bit of blue there I've got in my in my hand again mixing up the colors so it doesn't suddenly feel as if it's it's all rather artificial that it's so that everything's going to feel part of your painting um, so you know use a couple of colors and also you know but be a be a bit careful you can you can very easily overdo it um you know and it then then ends up looking rather daft um but if you find that you you know you've scraped it off and, and you've scraped off a little bit too much um just sort of fan it off your paper either with a as you see me doing sometimes with my little fan brush just wafting over to take the excess dust off um or other or otherwise just give it a quick blow but then make sure you stand back you know don't breathe in all that pastel dust um but give it a quick blow off and then you can uh, you know then then uh, as long as you haven't pushed it down with glassine it will just come straight off the paper uh, once you get that glassine paper on and push it down then that's sort of like pushed into the tooth of the paper um, and I will actually say here that I am working on a sanded paper here um, I, I think this one, I think this one's a, a, a Fisher Fisher paper that I've got for this particular painting. Um, now I've got a sand, now a sanded paper obviously does have tooth. Um, so when I do push it down with the glassine, um, you know, it, it pushes it into into that tooth. Um, now I'm not sure. I've never actually tried this with, a, you know, with a perhaps a Canson paper or something like that. I don't know how much, you know, how much you you'd actually get away with that. So you'd have to sort of like experiment with that a little bit if you're using perhaps a handsome paper or something like that um, but I must admit I very rarely use those papers I'm a <clears throat> excuse me I'm a lover of sanded paper because it gives me so many different opportunities you know to create you know to create depth and things within my painting so I must admit always going for a sanded paper I, I, I highly recommend that's if you if you if you enjoy painting in a lot of layers obviously if you just like going swooping down with one or two strokes and things then your cansons will do you absolutely fine um, but certainly for a uh, picture like this where you want to get those little details in um, the sanded papers really do help um, and that's it I really wanted you know I wanted to create this really pretty little scene um, it's just a simple little scene of a little little path going off around the corner but it was so pretty with the sunshine coming through and catching all those you know as I say all those lovely sparkles and things and so before I put a few more of those up in my tree, I just want to make sure that um, I've got got enough uh, blue in, the, in that background, uh, putting in a few sky holes there in my tree um, and just building up that, that top area just a little bit, um, making sure that it's not too mucky up there because obviously you're working in, in you know, in dark colours against light colours and things. Um, so I always like, you know, if you've watched me before, you know, I don't like too much of a mucky sky. And whilst I want this to feel a little bit of out, out of focus, 
focus and things i don't want to i don't want to get too much of that dark into that into that pretty blue so um adding a little bit more color color there and so now i'm going to come back hopefully where i've gone ah here i come uh, i'm going to come up come back up into the top area now and uh, you know sort of add some sparkles um and things on top of all that foliage that i've just sort of um put down there um so that these ones that are going to be on the top these are the ones that are going to be really bright and 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 sort of the brightest of them if you know what i mean and i'm going to go through this tree and i'm going to you know through these trees and branches again looking at my reference photos seeing where the sunshine's coming through and and hitting these things and creating all those pretty colors um and using a couple of different colors up there as a, as i mentioned earlier i'll use i've got the green in my hand at the moment i come back with a little bit of pink a little bit of blue a little bit of that a little bit more of that of that sort of like crystally silver silvery white um or silvery grey, very light grey that is. Um, and, you know, just a mixture up there so that it, again, it doesn't feel as if it's just sort of like white plonked on the paper, um, that it all feels part of it. Um, and every now and again, you know, I'll come in and as you see me there now with the pencil and whatever, uh, just coming in to create a couple more little more branches and things, building up the depth as I go, as, as I go really. So I hope you're enjoying this video and watching, you know, watching these uh, these little bits come together. Um, and as I say, you know, you can you can do it on a variety of different subjects. You can do it with snow, um, you know, little speckles of grass and things. Um, it really does just add that little finishing touch sometimes. Um, you know, as I say, be a little bit careful. Don't go overboard with it. Um, but it's, you know, it's a really little handy technique that you can use. Um, so obviously, if you wanted to see this, you know, this actual painting in its full um, I've got that, you know, I've got this over on my Patreon channel um, and you can see sort of like the whole painting come to come together. But I wanted to show you guys over here on YouTube um, just how I create the, all these sparkles and things. So I'll just let you uh, watch me finish off these last little few finishing details. Thank you so much for spending some of your time with me. I do hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, if you have, please do give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Um, I'm posting new things all the time. So if you'd like to know when some new paintings come up or or little demos like this uh, do subscribe i'd love to have some more subscribers and um, thank you so much once again i wish you a lovely week um i hope you get to do some painting and if you do make sure it's happy okay then take care lots of love bye bye